Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistens. This video is going to be a low mass mission to Minmus. We're going to take Bill Kerman to the surface of Minmus and back with the lowest launch mass possible. Now if this sounds to you like something that we've already done on this channel, you're right, we have. I've had a couple goes at this myself, along with several other people like Turbo Pump who have participated in pushing the mass lower. My last go at this had a launch mass of 1,323 kilograms, not counting the pilot. And when I finished this, I was fairly confident that we were getting at the ideal profile of what a low min miss mission looks like. Calling something impossible in Kerbal Space Program is a bad policy, but I looked and I could not see a way that a large margin of improvement could be made on this. The two years following that video seemed to have vindicated that position fairly well. I was sent an incredible video by another member of the KSP community who managed to knock 44 kilograms off of that launch mass. I will link that video in the description. You should go check it out and give it some views. Now, Squad has cracked the gates open a little bit on this challenge with the introduction of the new Kerbal inventory system. There's two changes here that we need to know in the context of this challenge. The first is that the additional EVA packs that a Kerbal can bring increase the maximum delta V on EVA by about 300 meters per second. The other thing is that the total mass of this pilot with the extra EVA fuel is about 16 kilograms more than what a Kerbal used to be. The extra EVA delta V is a positive for this challenge. The extra pilot mass is a negative for this challenge. However, the net sum of these changes is going to overall be an improvement on what we can do. The launch mass on this now is going to be down to 1,199 kilograms, 124 kilograms less than the last time. Getting into the mission, we're going to start by spooling up the Juno engine a bit and then bouncing it off of the launch pad to get started. Next step, we're going to start picking up horizontal speed as soon as possible. And then we're going to stay right above the surface of the ocean and try to reach the highest speed possible with the Juno stage. Staying right at sea level is important here because the thrust curve of the Juno engine, as with the other air breathing engines, is a function of the Mach number. The higher the speed of sound, the higher speed we can reach while still only going at the same Mach speed. As we're reaching the Vmax of the Juno stage, the next stage, the Spark engine, is going to fire up. We've saved mass on a decoupler by having this just burn off the Juno engine and the intake. As we reach the Vmax of the Juno stage, the spark engine for the next stage is going to fire up. This burns off the Juno engine, saving mass for a decoupler, as well as the intake which was mounted in reverse inside the Juno engine. Here is where we are going to start climbing out of the lower atmosphere. I'm going to pull up to a pitch of 35 degrees. I experimented around with some control options on how to do this. The smoothest turned out to be using a flight controller to, for the pitch axis and to keep using a keyboard for the roll and yaw axis. This ascent profile didn't leave a lot of room for correction, so getting this precise was really important for an efficient ascent. After the spark stage has finished burning, I have an apoapsis of 62 kilometers. I'm now going to coast to 50 kilometers before we fire up the third and final stage to get to orbit. The third stage is most certainly not aero, and we definitely want to get into the very thinnest parts of the atmosphere at least before we get rid of the fairing. This is going to burn us the rest of the way into a circular orbit. This is going to be quite a lengthy burn, and to give us enough time to do this, I am going to be pitching up a little bit, which will counteract gravity until we get into a full orbit and give us more time to do this burn before we start falling again. Finally, we hit circular curve in orbit with 433 meters per second of delta V remaining. This is not enough to go to Minmus and back, but as with last time, we are going to be using the Kerbal EVA flight to do a lot of this. And with the extra EVA packs, we can go even further on EVA than before. To start off with, we're going to put the remaining rocket fuel in the spider stage to work by stretching our nearly perfectly circular curve in orbit into a more eccentrically elliptical orbit. I've left the spider stage with just one meter per second of fuel remaining. We're going to need that later. But for now, Bill's going to say goodbye to the chair and head off to Minmus on his own. We're going to be doing the same orbital maneuvers with the EVA stage as we did with the spider stage. We're going to keep burning prograde 
at the periapsis. We are still in elliptical orbit of Kerbin when we run out of EVA fuel in the extra tanks. As with other fuel tanks, the EVA tanks do have a dry mass, so we're going to use Bill's engineering ability to drop this off in space. Maybe in a future mission we'll come back and clean up the litter. With the extra EVA tanks detached, we now have the same capacity of 5 units of EVA fuel as we did before these changes, but since the mass of a Kerbal now goes down with the consumption of EVA fuel, the same impulse is going to go further in terms of delta V. The ever helpful moon is going to save us some additional change in velocity with a gravity assist that's going to fling us the rest of the way out to Minmus. A few moments later, Bill has coasted through space, been pulled through the sphere of influence of the moon, and after a few more orbits of Kerbin, has reached Minmus. Despite the oddness of EVA flight, going from a rendezvous with Minmus down to a low Minmus orbit is done in exactly the standard way. The truly bizarre moment comes when we touch down on the surface of Minmus. Obviously, this being EVA flight, we have no landing gear or anything like that. But if our angle of incidence with the surface at the moment of impact is low enough, we'll be able to survive at a ground speed of up to 50 meters per second. Several kilometers of potentially uncomfortable low-G tumbling and surface impacts later, we finally come to a stop. Not only will the niceties of boots and flags be observed, but just for a little bit of an extra edge, we're going to use the flag as a place to stand on to help us get back to Minmus orbit. To be clear, this makes no significant difference whatsoever, but we're going to do it. The ascent back to Minmus orbit is going to be, as with the rest of this mission, a fairly standard maneuver. But looking at the margins of change in velocity we have remaining, all of this does need to be very precise in order for Bill to get home. We used a gravity assist to save Delta V on the way out from Kerbin to Minmus, and we're going to use one again to get back to Kerbin. Usually the only requirement for this gravity assist is that we end up with an orbit of Kerbin that has a periapsis within the upper atmosphere. However, we can't land Bill by himself. He'll burn up before he hits the ground. We need to rendezvous with the spider stage and chair that we left in elliptical orbit of Kerbin, which means we need to match the argument of that periapsis. Adding requirements to a gravity assist enormously increases the complexity. The easiest way to deal with this is just to wait in orbit of Minmus until the moon just happens to be in the right place, which is what I did on this mission. Now that we're in orbit of Kerbin, with our periapsis just within the atmosphere, that's going to slowly slow down our orbit until we match that of the spider stage. One of the potential backup plans I had for this rendezvous was that if I was running out of change in velocity, I would try to just aim for the chair and just have Bill grab it as he goes flying by, but our margins ended up being good enough that we had just enough to actually properly slow down and do the docking. Now that we've redocked for the chair, we just need to look at landing this thing on carbon. The one meter per second of delta V remaining in the spider stage is just enough to drop us into a suborbital trajectory. The final challenge to look at here is that of heat. I've placed a small radiator here to protect Bill from the atmosphere. I've seen some other people in the KSP community demonstrate using a ladder to do this. I wasn't able to get this to work in the most recent patch. I don't know if small changes have been made or I'm missing something, but that's going to be something I'm going to look into for the next low mass mission. The small radiator panel is five kilograms more than the ladder, but it does do an excellent job of protecting Bill on the way down. We have no way to control our descent here, so we're not aiming for the Kerbal Space Center. We don't need to hope for either land or water to land on. We'll be fine on either. The way a Kerbal docks with a command chair makes them shockingly resistant to impacts. We ended up with a water landing on this one. Perhaps a little bit less dramatic than being on land. Maybe more realistic, although I do think the ship of real world realism has certainly already sailed on this one. That brings this mission to a close. To conclude, I'm going to reissue a challenge that I gave the last time I did a low mass to min-miss mission. 
I'm sure that this mission can have its margins improved, and I even mentioned some of the ways that that might be done in this video. What I don't see is a way to do this mission in a qualitatively different way, where the profile of the mission is significantly changed that leads to some kind of dramatic improvement in the launch mass that's necessary to go to Minmus and back. But I can't say that's not possible. And if you figure out a way to do it, I'll be really impressed. Thank you everyone very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.